we were syndicated. So um, it's been going great ever since. Wow. So. You know, these things, uh, people get famous. And uh, did you ever know Gene Moore? Okay. Yeah. You know, Gene oh. was syndicated everywhere by the time that he. Yeah. And I never could figure out why he quit doing it. I think he just got fed up with it. He must have. Yeah. I mean, it was. Right. Did you say we had speed? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. We're doing it. Here, all right, here, here. <laughs> okay. All right. It is a pleasure to welcome to the Cinema Showcase one of our foremost authors, Mr. Pat Conway. Pat, it's very good to see you so far away from home. It, 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 it's amazing <laughs> we meet not in Atlanta but here. That's right. Let me first of all ask you, I know uh, writers aren't often, uh, traditionally they're not supposed to be pleased with movie, movie versions of their works. Yet, of course, this time on The Prince of Tides, you wrote the screenplay. Uh, but then you had that screenplay interpreted by Barbara Streisand for the right. film. Are you pleased with what, with what she did? Yeah, I, I'm not only pleased, I'm delighted. And not only am I delighted, I'm here today. And, uh, well, that says a lot, really. I, mean, this is, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I was simply you know, blown away by the film. It was, uh, you know, when Barbara first called me, you know, you never, you, you never have any idea. And especially Barbara would be more famous than God. I, was, I had no idea how to, uh, you know, what was going to happen by her. But, you know, what occurred is I did not know about her perfection, her attention to detail. I also did not know she was a great director. Mm -hmm. And so now I found that out, and so everybody else very soon. All right, when you adapted the book for the screen, was it, a, was it a tough job to boil down this really immense novel? It, it was not only a tough job, it was a, I didn't do it very well. It was, you know, book biblical in length, <laughs> and it, I mean, it covered all of our century. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and I simply did not know how to do it. I did not bring enough skills or gifts as a screenwriter to this. So I gave it a shot. It wasn't any good. And, but you know, what Barbara did when she came into it is she had an idea of the film she wanted to make. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has had enough experience in film where she... I think read that and knew how she would make this film. And it was her vision that got it done. I mean, it was her vision of the screenplay that got it done. Mm -hmm. Everything about this movie has Barbara Streisand written all over it. One of the marvelous things about the film is that it is cast so perfectly. I, you know, after having seen, or at first, after having read the book, and I fell in love with the book, um, you always envision various people. Uh, who are they going to, you know, who are they going to, it for this if they ever make a movie of it. I, I did that with, with your book after I read it. But nothing prepared me to, to accept the, the characters that we have in the film so completely. Everybody's perfectly cast. I, I've never seen anything like it. It, it was when, when I first met her, and you know, I was, you know, scared. It's frightening to meet somebody like Barbara. And because, you know, what I wanted to do at first was just groove on the fact that I was sitting there with Barbara Streisand mm -hmm. and nobody else in the world was. But, you know, I, you know and I got over there and she said, I want to ask you something. Honestly, do I look like Dr. Lowenstein to you? Is that, am I who you had in mind? I said, no. And she said, who'd you have in mind? I said, well, my wife. You know, you know, you know, so I know what she looks like because you know, I wrote her. So she said, it wasn't me? I said, no. So she had one of these things that she clicked. And she had done, I don't know, a screen test with herself in it. And she says, does this look like Dr. Lowenstein? And she did, she did that click, I looked up. And you always forget what actors can do. Suddenly, Barbara Streisand sitting there had become the shrink, and she was dressed perfectly, and her expression was perfect, and she was, she was in character. I said, "Yeah, yeah, that's her. Mm -hmm. That's good." And it was my, you know my first indication the whole magic of acting, the whole magic of directing. Mm -hmm. It was my first indication that I said, "Boy, this woman knows what she's doing. Absolutely. This woman's good." Absolutely. Let me ask you a very general question: What is it? Do you think about? Southern writers, and goodness knows this is this is hardly a, a new statement. What is it about <laughs> Southern writers that uh, that gives them such fantastic imagination? Because you look at most most of the great writers we've had, of uh, great novels we've had, they, I would say a preponderance have been Southern writers. You know, I think the one thing we get is I love hanging around Southern writers because. What we get are these grotesque and wonderful families. I mean, this is, you know, I'll be dipping into my family for the rest of my life. I mean, God could not have put me with a greater family. I think of my grandfather, my grandmother, my, you know, my aunts and uncles, my cousins. I mean, I just, 
I can write the rest of my life, and if I told you a story now, you'd say you're exaggerating. I mean, I'd be toning it down just to get you to believe me slightly. And you know, I know in my own case there was a great storytelling tradition in the family. Of uh, someone asked me after the great Santini came, where'd you get that wonderful idea of the man living with 26 dogs? And I said that was Uncle Joe. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uncle Joe just he loved dogs and he lived on a school bus with 26 dogs. We'd go visit him and all the dogs would run out of the school bus and they'd run back in. <laughs> and uh, you know, my imagination is not very good. I I'm more of a reporter. Well, you know, being being a southerner myself, I. I, f I feel that too. I think it's. I think you have to. Um, you obviously have to live in the South to, um, at least for a certain period of time, not just be born there and moved. I think you have to live there and absorb some of it, to, um, to get, to capture that imagination, put it down on paper, and then transform it to the screen, whatever. Um, so, but but you go back and, and look at, at the great writers, and uh, I mean, you would agree with me that uh, there's so many of them have been. Have been Southern. I do, you know, I, I, I like this very much. I went to the University of Georgia football game a couple of years ago, and I thought this was the only place to see it. I sat next to an 80 year old woman who barked during the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, Does a lot of barking bother you? I said, Yeah, it does. She said, Tough. <laughs> and, she said, Arf, Arf. and she just barked the entire game. And she said, She supported the Bulldogs like this. And I said, Thank God I live in the South. Yeah, you wouldn't. <laughs> I have no idea what they do in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, you said you know you could go on writing stories about your family uh, forever, but what are what are some of the immediate projects you have in mind that you're? you're working I've been on writing a, a new novel that uh, it takes place in South Carolina once again, it takes place in Atlanta, and so what this is is it's one of the, another one of these endless novels. I'd like to write a short tome of a hundred pages before I die, but you know once again, I, this one has all kinds of things. My mother's death. Um, the Holocaust. I mean, it, it, it simply includes a lot because there's nothing about Southerners. There's one story leads to another. Mm -hmm. And one thing leads to another, and I simply can't help it. Well, we'll look forward to that. And I hope everybody will take the chance to go see uh, the film version of, see a good of movie. your book. I'm the telling you, they'll see a good, good movie. Yeah. Pat, thanks for taking this time out, and I look forward to our next talk. Sounds a pleasure.